So people tend to get confused about personal insurance, right? Like, do I need it? What is it about? Is it really necessary? Hi everyone, I'm Joel from Honest Insurance MY and I'm with Myra today to help give you a personal education on your own life insurance planning. So what are some typical you know, confusion that Malaysians get when they want to buy personal insurance or maybe like they choose not to have personal insurance? So what I've heard so far is basically younger people who feel like they don't need it yet because they're still healthy uh, or some people they say they have no budget for it uh, and somehow they manage to get another Starbucks coffee every day and then there are also people who feel like I, I want to get a personal insurance, medical, life, but I don't know where to start. And lastly, there are also a group of people who feel like insurance can't be cheap people money, like, you know, they just want to sell to you and just take all your money away. So yeah, those are the typical reasons that Malaysians don't get personal insurance. So actually, personal insurance is really, really important. And we're going to talk about some examples where you may need it. Life insurance and medical insurance, people tend to confuse them together and they're like the same thing, right? I get one insurance means it covers everything. Well, actually, they're not really the same thing. So let's talk about some examples that you might need. So the first one I can, the top of my head is sometimes you get sick. For example, dengue or you get appendicitis, you know, or maybe even worse like cancer or stroke. Things that you don't really think you'll get because young people are healthy or like you have been healthy your whole life. But I think the world now has come to a point where even no matter how healthy you are, things like cancer can actually attack anybody. Due to all these unexpected diseases that you don't really plan for in your financials. So when you go to the hospital and then you get hit by a bill, right? You're like, whoa, what is that 20,000 bill? Um, I can give an example that I've heard of a case recently for a brain surgery that someone did. It actually cost over about 600,000 ringgit. So if you have about 800 to 1 million ringgit in your bank account, then definitely insurance or medical insurance is not for you. But if you are not a one a millionaire yet and you want to go to the hospital for a treatment, well, insurance might be a cheaper way to do it. Another example is if you commute a lot, in if you're in Klein Valley, you commute a lot or you drive a lot and you get into an accident and you're hit pretty bad, I would say. So you need to get treatment, you know. So all these hospital bills, nurses bills, or even your, your stay at the hospital, all cost money, they're not all free. So actually what can this medical insurance do is to actually help you to cover uh, all of it or partial depending on what coverage you get. So it actually helps to reduce your burden. And the last example I can think of is if you're a breadwinner of the family, so you have five kids under your roof and then you're earning maybe a good decent 20,000 a month. So life is great. But have you ever think about what if you go into an accident and you unexpectedly pass away? So what happens to your wife and your five kids, right? So that's where life insurance kicks in because you can actually help them to maintain their life, you know, to sustain their life. So these are some examples that insurance can help alleviate your financial burdens. The types of insurance out there for your personal insurance coverage that you can get for yourself. So the first one is the hospitalization insurance or what people call the medical card. What it does is essentially if you go into the hospital to stay overnight for any treatment, surgery. The key point here is actually to stay overnight because if you don't stay overnight, then you are considered an outpatient and this medical insurance covers only certain types of outpatient treatment. But yeah, hospitalization insurance is essentially if you go and stay overnight, you get a certain treatment or surgery, then all the bills to your illness will be covered by the insurance company. So this is very helpful if you want to go to a private hospital which costs a lot of money. And moving on to the second one, which is the life insurance. So bear in mind, um, life insurance insurance always comes together with TPD. So TPD is total permanent disability. Uh, life and TPD, they always come together because if someone is considered to be totally permanent disabled, then they're almost as good as dead, harshly to say. There are certain conditions to fill, like what exactly is TPD? For example, you can't shower yourself, you can't feed yourself, you can't move yourself. So this life and TPD coverage benefits always usually together, unless you can request to the insurance company to separate it. And yeah, so what essentially it does is it covers uh, the life of the person they are able to claim or usually the nominee get to claim a certain benefit and the last one which I feel is the one of the most important type is actually critical illness benefit um, especially if you are you have some sort of family history of diabetes cancer heart attack and why I feel that's important is because critical illness is a type of condition where you might get sick but you're not disabled so you're able to move around sometimes but you need to recover and during your recovery period you can't work right so what happens to your income and all your debt and 
commitments. So when you get a critical illness, you can claim this whole lump sum benefit to sustain your life or some people might call it income replacement. So basically you're paying yourself with this insurance benefit. There are many types of personal insurance out there, but personally, this is the top three that would be the foundation type of insurance that everybody should have. And before I end this video, I'm just gonna share about four factors that actually affect the cost of premium, right? So depending on your own budget, um, you will need to prioritize what comes first, what is important to you. So I'm gonna share with you four factors of how insurance companies actually count the premium. So the first one is actually your gender. So male and female, they're actually different uh, because of their different mortality rates. So the second one actually is the occupation. So they actually compare with like, if you're a male working in an office compared to a female working in a construction site, then the premium will actually be different. The third one is actually your age. So remember guys, every year you grow older, according to your birthday, it's an extra like 50 to 100 ringgit premium per month. So it's always, that's why it's always a cliche, you always hear to get your insurance when you're younger. Because when you're younger, it's actually really much cheaper. So the last factor affecting your premium cost is actually if you're a smoker or not. True, if you're a smoker, the premium costs a little bit extra, but it's not substantially huge. And the reason that you want to be honest with the insurance company is because if you get, for example, maybe some kind of related cancer like lung cancer, like they, you don't want to be in a position where they say, you didn't tell us you're a smoker and we're not gonna cover this. So yeah, that sums it all, like the four factors that affect your insurance premium. So that's all for today guys. Thank you for watching and listening. And if you do have any questions, feel free to DM me at Honest Insurance MY and I'll get back to all your questions.